And finally, hip arthrodesis. Uh, when to do it? Uh, I gotta admit, I don't think I've done a hip arthrodesis for about 15 years. Uh, but if you have an 18-year-old uh, laborer with severe hip arthritis and pain uh, from a mid-slip capital femoral epiphysis, as uh, indicated in this particular question, uh, you may in fact decide to do a hip arthrodesis, uh, particularly if their spine, ipsilateral knee, and contralateral hip are uh, intact without arthritis. So the question is, what is the optimum position for hip arthrodesis? You see the options listed here. And in the sake of time, I'll just go right to the answer. And the most appropriate answer is slight external rotation, a slight adduction, and approximately 20 degrees of hip flexion. Uh, so there is some debate about this, but you want to avoid abduction of the hip. So slight external rotation, slight adduction, and 20 degrees of hip flexion to make uh, getting in and out of chairs and seats uh, easier. So the indication, um, really it was indicated a lot prior to hip replacement, and with the refinement of hip replacement, the indications for arthrodes arthrodesis have uh, definitely decreased. I think it's important to realize that once you do a successful hip arthrodesis, even if you have an idealized position, you're going to reduce the efficiency of your gait by 50%. You're going to increase pelvic rotation in the contralateral hip and increase stress in the adjacent joints. And typically, uh, it requires about 30% more energy to get around and ambulate with an arthrodesed hip. Uh, the most common uh, side effect of a hip arthrodesis is adjacent joint degeneration, either of the lumbar spine, ipsilateral knee, or contralateral hip. Uh, and often uh, patients will come to arthrodesis take down in 20 to 25 years, but at least in the very young, you've bought some time. So indications. Uh, I, I've got to admit I've never salvaged a failed total hip with an arthrodesis, but certainly in young active laborers with unilateral uh, arthritis of the hip and all other joints are okay. It's certainly a reasonable consideration. Um, sometimes in neuropathic arthropathy or tumor resection, contraindications include active infections, severe limb length discrepancy, which is typical in a failed total hip, uh, and certainly in the case of bilateral hip arthritis, arthritis arthrodesing one hip is not going to do any favors to the contralateral hip. And if you have a contralateral total hip replacement, again, this would be a relative contraindication to arthrodesing the other hip. Now what about converting a fused hip to a total hip? The most common indication for this is debilitating back pain or severe ipsilateral knee arthritis. Uh, you want to get appropriate radiographs, which will include AP lateral views and a CT scan to determine where the uh, fusion is most robust. You want to determine the integrity of the abductors, because that's really going to uh, give you an indication of the quality of results you're going to have. So an EMG can be useful to assess how functioning the gluteus medius is. And the outcome of takedown of it. Uh, hip arthrodesis to a total hip is really dependent on the integrity of the abductor complex. Uh, there was an article by uh, Jossi uh, looking at 208 hip fusions converted to total hip replacement. The majority did well and uh, actually had 93% survivorship at 15 years. So the results are really dependent on the integrity of the uh, abductor mechanism, and I think the patient is so thankful to gain motion that uh, anything seems way better than their arthrodesed hip. And fortunately, the incidence of instability is relatively low. So when you're doing a hip arthrodesis, and this may be for historical uh, factors only, you want to achieve uh, bony apposition of the surfaces with rigid fixation, promote early mobilization, but the key is getting an arthrodesis. You want to avoid damage to the abductor mechanism. And again, the ideal position of the hip 
that's R through D is 20 to 30 degrees of flexion, 0 to 5 of A deduction, and 5 to 10 degrees of external rotation. And the take-home message, if you can't remember those answers, just remember you want to avoid abduction of the hip with arthrodesis. Now there's a couple surgical techniques. Certainly the cobra plate has been popularized, but you want to make sure that you do a trochanteric osteotomy, preserving the abductor so that if, in fact, you take this down, those can be reattached. Another popular uh, way of doing this is with an anterior plating with supplemental screw fixation to ensure rigid fixation of the femoral head into the acetabulum. Complications, as I mentioned, low back pain is probably one of the number one leading causes of takedown of hip arthrodesis, as well as ipsilateral knee degeneration and contralateral hip degeneration. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.